croup is a respiratory tract infection usually occurring between the ages of 6 months and 3 years. The most common cause is infection with parainfluenza virus types 1 and 3, though it can also be caused by respiratory syncytial virus, influenza and adenovirus. Males are estimated to be affected 40% more commonly than females. The infection leads to inflammation in the upper and lower respiratory tract, particularly involving the larynx, trachea, bronchi and even the lung parenchyma in some cases. And this is why croup is also known as laryngotracheobronchitis. The resulting swelling can lead to obstruction of the airway, particularly the subglottic region, leading to the characteristic barking cough as well as increased work of breathing and in some cases respiratory failure. The typical presentation features a prodrome of chorizal symptoms like rhinorrhea and a non-barking cough roughly 12 to 72 hours before the development of a cough, as we said classically described as a seal-like barking cough. which can often be worse at night. A hoarse voice is also common, and fever is present in roughly 50%. There may be features of respiratory distress, such as tachypnea, stridor, which is a high-pitched whistling sound during breathing, <coughs> nasal flaring, or chest and stomach retractions. Bearing in mind that these tend to be worse when agitated, therefore keeping the child calm is important. Diagnosis is made clinically, meaning no specific test is required, though in cases where it is not clear, then an x-ray of the upper airway may reveal narrowing of the subglottic region, termed the steeple sign. X-rays are not done if the clinical picture suggests epiglottitis or bacterial tracheitis due to potential worsening of obstruction with manipulation of the neck. In most cases, the infection lasts 3 to 4 days and children can be treated at home with antipyrexials and hydration. NICE guidance recommends a single dose of corticosteroid, such as dexamethasone, for any child diagnosed with croup with some studies showing a 50% reduction in admission rates and treatment effect being apparent within two hours. In moderate or severe cases, the nebulized adrenaline is also used. In cases with evidence of respiratory distress, cyanosis, hypoxia or dehydration, then admission is indicated, which may range from supplemental oxygen to endotracheal ventilation.